Welcome back to The Watch, and uh, the tag Gamergate 2 has caught on much quicker than I thought. I mean, I guess that's what they want, so they're going to just bring it on. Not only that, I think it's caught on because I think we also want it. For, hear me out, right? For different reasons. For different reasons, that's the key. That's the key. Because this thing that's happening with the... Uh, exposing of Sweet Baby Inc, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, investment, propaganda, tick boxes, woke messaging being injected into games, all that stuff. All this getting exposed through the Sweet Baby Inc debacle, right, is exposing Gamergate 1 for what it really was. Mm -hmm. The journalists want Gamergate 2 because they think they can do what they did the first time around. Yes. And they are trying so desperately already to do the same, because they're doing the exact same thing. Like Grums's tweet, where he says, this was their playbook, mm. and we shared that in a previous video, this is what they'll do to do, is near prophetic with its accuracy. Not near, it is. It is just prophetic with its accuracy. Because uh, I, I should really just bring up that tweet, I think. So here is his tweet, and it's worth looking at again, because this is what, this is the narrative formula. Do something terrible and wrong, that was number one. Number two, get called out for it. Number three, get journalist friends to write hit pieces. Num and we've kind of talked about that already, where, you know, um, well, that, was, that was our video where they are losing already. Yeah. There's more of that. But now we're, we are all so deep into number four already. Paint yourself as the victim. Okay. And this has happened in several articles uh, already, where <laughs> they are accusing everyone else of harassing Sweet Baby Inc. Mm -hmm. When Sweet Baby Inc., the employer, literally launched a, a, a harassment campaign to get not only this um, curator list taken down off of Steam, but the creator banned off of Steam to lose all the games he's played for. It was targeted harassment. And even the articles themselves were trying to go into Discord servers and dox people. Dox people, right? And so we're, 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 it, it's, it's so predictable. But unlike the first Gamergate, they don't have any power now. Everyone can see this bullcrap for what it really is. And even though there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of you know game journalists trying to circle the wagons, and we have a couple of examples here, like this. Diversity is not your enemy in live in a live service world, right? This is all in response to the Sweet Baby. A company called Sweet Baby Inc. has become a target of anti-woke gamers because it offers consultant. It's just consultancy work. What are you worried about? An industry standard service that's been normal for years. We, it's funny. We literally acknowledge that in our one of our previous video where we talk about the first, you know, elements of this, that, of course, normal consultancy work is fine. I'm going to be hiring normal consultants. I, I've been hired as a consultant, right? Okay. This isn't that. This is about consultants that are purely there for political, ideological reasons. Mm. It's not to improve the product. It's to workify the product. Okay? Or make it, you know, more, more sensitive for viewers who yes. might find it insensitive. Because mm -hmm. they're sensitivity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the bullcrap. The, the the lies that are baked into these articles, just the, just with their uh, headlines, right, it, it is extreme. Like this one: Why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against me? Look at this. This is just it's concern trolling. It's the same playbook. They're like, this is the whole, you know, like Valve and and Discord. You don't want to be called like harassment enabled, don't you? You don't want to be called. It would be a shame if someone called you sexist, wouldn't mm. it? Um. Or alt right, you know, on the side. Sure, would be a shame. So, like th th this, like articles like this are veiled threats, okay? And they're made to uh, attack essentially the platforms. They're going for the platforms to try and deplatform because they can't win on the arguments. No. So they have to go for cancellation and censorship, right? And that's just a number of articles amongst the slew that has come out. And so. It's shocking. And again, like like going back to this one, um, it's the target of anti-woke gamers. It's like, I would consider myself anti-woke, but most gamers, they just don't like crap games. Okay? And it's also, <laughs> they're acknowledging that um, the Sweet Baby Inc. is explicitly to try and wokeify the game. 
right? But the target of harassment, right? When it was the Sweet Baby Inc. employer that targeted harassment first, and the actual, like, what is harassment, Nathan? What would you call consider harassment? I don't know anymore, because in this extension, it's like... Anything that is not again, like with your opinion, is basically mm. harassment. It seems if I like that. I don't agree that. with you. Like, like, like this video would be considered harassment to, to these people, yeah. right? Well, funny you say that because with monetization now, it's tick boxes saying, you know, we criticize other people's opinions. <laughs> Just be sensitive, advertisers. We do criticize things, and. The other people, there's like, oh, I'm being harassed. How terrible! Are the most great one. They criticize people for the most dumb, stupid, tepid, non-reasons, right? Mm. But they go so much further than that. They not only criticize, they attack. They try and deplatform. They try and ruin lives. They literally have gotten people, like, ruined their lives so much that people have committed suicide, right? These are awful, vile people. But they actually play victim. Yes. And this is where we're at. Where, oh, sweet baby, Eek is just the target of harassment. Oh, shocking, right? And it's it's amazing how like dumb they think people are where they can play. But okay, so they want to try and use the same tactics, Game Gate One, which is what they in Game Gate One. That's what happened. Oh, Zoe Quinn is just a victim of uh, of sexist alt right trolls when they were calling her out for literally sleeping with people to get favorable reviews and preferential treatment. Mm. Right? It was so off the walls unethical what she was doing, but she's just the victim. And of course, everyone circled the rags, the wagons, these, but this poor woman, right? Right? We must protect the poor woman and all the old gamers are sexist and anyone criticizes her. But so they try, it's, it's, it's one for one mm. <laughs> what they're trying to do. And they want to recreate it because they uh, think that they can get the same results. On the other end, I'm I'm like, okay, yeah, bring on the Gamergate 2 because you are just going to be exposing yourself. You're losing drastically. And so, yeah, I'm here for Gamergate 2, if that's what you want to call it. And it seems both sides have latched onto it. Fine, we're ready for this fight. It's like it's like the, the acknowledgement of Gamergate 2 is the declaration of war where both sides are ready to fight. All right, World War II now. We're doing it now. Let's we're, do it. We're all on board. Yeah. And this is like the reverse of World War One and Two, where in World War One everyone cheered when it was declared. When World War II was declared, everyone cried. When Gamergate 1, <laughs> everyone cried. When Gamergate 2, the gamers celebrate because they're going to lose and they're already losing drastically because there's a couple of massive differences. The um, the uh, um, uh, journalists, uh, they're not trusted, they don't have nearly as much influence. So many of these journalistic you know, platforms are ags, they've gone under. Mm. Which is the one that died, um, went bankrupt recently? I don't know because I there's don't There's been a read number. Was it Vice uh, one of them? Yeah. Just, just these crap ones, right? YouTubers have way more influences. Mm. You are welcome. <laughs> well, that's a, we're here to serve, right? Um, and then on another thing, there are actually the rise of uh, other, you know, journalists kind of things, um, uh, online articles. You have like the Publica, or Quartering is doing. Uh, Fandom Pulse, John De La Rosa is handling that. Um, you've got Bounding Into Comics and uh, a couple of other ones. And when you look up Sweet Baby Inc. news, right, on Google, you do see a slew of like crap ones, but, huh, on interestingly, that there, there seems to be ones that actually might be, okay, like look, GTA 6 involvement with Woke, Sweet Baby Inc. explained. That could be a bit of a defense, but to me, that's just, <laughs> you know, exposing that they were involved with Sweet Baby Inc. Um, what, what actually happened? Why should care? That seems to be defense. Look at this one. Sweet Baby Inc. CEO Kim Belair admits she wanted to take over the video game industry. That doesn't sound exactly positive. I wonder if it's still beta article, but to me, that would be like, she, she's an awful person. I, 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 she, she's the one that says, you know, terrify the game companies to get, you know, your work in there. Um, okay, after the mess that Sweet Baby Inc. caused for Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, GTA 6 fans are concerned. Huh. That seems like a bit more of a balanced thing. Am I, I think with the GTA 6 ones, they're using a lot of bait. Probably. For, for, for probably. the game. Yeah, I'm not saying trust any of these yeah. ones. Um, 
GTA 6 fans worried about Sweet Baby Ink involvement. GTA 6 fans, are so a lot of the GTA 6 stuff. Uh, Sweet Baby Ink confirms you need no prior knowledge of Gamergate to enjoy Gamergate 2. <laughs> that sounds like a fun one. I don't know. Um, okay, it's not perfect, but it doesn't seem like wall to wall. And uh, I have been seeing articles, only a couple, and you know, that uh, are not completely lying through their teeth. And then you have actually some, you know, um, article websites that are on the side of gamers. Not many. The, the, the whole, the larger majority is against it. Okay, so there's that, right? Then there is the YouTubers, like I mentioned. And then there's good old Twitter. So uh, one of these uh, journos tried to uh, do the whole, uh, there's a harassment campaign against Sweet Baby Inc. You wanna guess what happened to that tweet? Did it get deleted? No, got community noted. Oh yes. And the community note was just bang on the money. <laughs> it's like, Actually, no, this was uh, like, like, no her actual harassment. This is what, ha and it even says like, you know, um, Sweet Baby Inc. Her tried to harass uh, the maker of uh, the, the group, the yeah. group, the, the uh, curator group, sending harassment against them. And then they said, the curator group has sent no direct harassment at all against Sweet Baby. <laughs> and I was like, Mwah! chef's kiss. Community notes, uh, community notes is great. And then of course, Twitter is, they do not control Twitter anymore. Twitter is, an area to get breaking news that is not controlled by the narrative. And I'm saying it's reliable. You need to tr you need to be aware of everything on Twitter, but it's like the Wild West. Mm, <laughs> Things yes. will just appear there and uh, very rarely will it get destroyed, shadow banned, people banned and things like that. And so uh, a lot of the news about Sweet Baby Inc. It can't get suppressed because Twitter is just and it's funny, they even they, they were the ones that tried to use Twitter. This is where they launched the harassment campaign and, and cancellation campaign against the curator group, Sweet Baby Inc. detected on Steam, uh, on Twitter. And this, like, the Streisand effect of this is just amazing. Like, like, if you could just comprehend, the purpose of this tweet was to shut down the curator group, meaning that they did not want people to know about it. Mm. And now the entire world seems to know it as bleeding over into the mainstream bit by bit. It's not, you know, uh, my mum doesn't know anything about it. Even my wife doesn't. I, I, like most normal people don't know what's going on. No. But it is an actual, like it's an important part of the culture war that's happening right now. Because Gaming Gate 1 was an important part of the culture war. The journos might think they won. And in some ways they did utilize it to uh, subtly sneak in um, to uh, the closed doors and get influence over game devs and, and platforms and institutions. But uh, as we talked about in one of our previous videos, they overplayed their hand and they actually ended up red pilling nearly all of ga the gaming audience against feminism and against work propaganda and stuff like that. And then it, it, it's no, and that was like, I consider Gamergate one an important point in the culture because that's when feminism actually started to get serious pull pushback and it was gamers that were pushing back and i don't consider they necessarily won because the larger game audience started to be aware of it mm -hmm. and that was the cause and even though some got kind of suckered in now even normies are fed up with this they see it in marvel they see it in games these games are failing dramatically and uh, we're winning but they're still doing the same tactics mm -hmm. and so check out this uh this tweet she is the person that said you can't be racist to white people. Yes, yeah. the Kotaku writer. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, and so, total racist. And by the way, she's now put that as a banner on her Twitter page. Yes. Yeah. Loud and proud, I Loud say. and proud racist. It's like, thank you for letting everyone know you're a despicable, horrible racist. Uh, opinion, you know, happy to be uh, uh, disregarded now. All right. But now she is, again, claiming victim. Now, this is interesting because this tweet that she has let, has posted here is vile and, and you know very very bad and i am suspicious i am deeply suspicious so this is where it's important for everyone who's trying to push back anything to not harass mm. any other, you criticize absolutely you know may, let your voice be heard and uh, speak with your wallet that, that's how we win okay uh something like this right is the exact type of thing that she wants. That's what they all want. That's what they all want. Yeah. Like, like why do you think she posts on Twitter? This is, they want the harassment to try and be able to prove playing the victim. Now, I've had like death threats and everything sent to me. 
and it's point like they, they mean nothing mm. they mean nothing and i actually think people who oppose woke ideology get her actual harassed vile things sent to them vastly more than the opposite end mm. we saw this with um uh, the Jordan Peterson, Kathy Newman uh, debate, where Kathy Newman tried to cl start to claim that she was getting harassment and stuff like mm. that. And uh, so someone actually got every single tweet tagging that tagged each one of them. And Jordan had like more than double or more things saying punches, like, I want to punch you in the face or go die or, you know, like vile harassment things, right? Um, and so uh, the people that actually send abuse and harass vastly more are people like, Alyssa McCunt, all right? And their articles lying about people and everything uh, actually, v especially if it has real damaging consequences, that's actual harassment in my mind, right? That's their whole playbook. Mm. They're, like, what's that um, really old um, journalist, um, Taylor Lorenz, that's her name. She targets um, anyone that doesn't in go in line with her narrative, specifically so, okay? She is a cry bully. She bullies other people, then plays the victim. And so that's what they think. They play the victim, right? And so then you see tweets like this. And this seems like so caricature parody mm. that I don't believe it. Like, like, they remember, these are the people who desperately want there to be a boogeyman yes. to oppose. Because that justifies their existence. It justifies their activism. And then it justifies companies like Sweet Baby Inc. who need to prepare the world from the terrible races. Nathan, how many white supremacist racists do you know in real life? I mean, if there are any that are like that, they haven't told me personally. So, so none. None, no, none, none that you know. No. Funny enough, none for me. Don't know a single... One who's like, I they go along and I just hate X group and everything like that. Same with that, like, overt sexists. That is just like, other person, I, like... I think as a society, we've been pretty good in calling yeah, most of those people out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, the only type of people, right, that is overtly, explicitly saying, I hate X group of people because of... And then this lady right here says, it's like, you can't be racing against white people. The only explicitly out the open racists that I actually know of directly are these people, yep. right? I don't know any of my real direct life. And even online, like, they try and point to, you know, white supremacists and everything. And there are, yeah, people that go way too far and even race and everything. But what we're seeing is these are such a tiny minority. Whereas opposed to people like Alyssa here, mm. vastly more as a large group that are backing each other up and lying and playing victim, vastly more sexist and bigots in the woke mob, right? And so the fact that there isn't enough, well, when I say enough, right, these people, they need more sexism to justify their existence. And so they make up sexism when it doesn't exist. Well, it's funny, you know, there are, I think, two, there's multiple co-founders of Super Inc. And one of them is a guy that was, used to work for Ubisoft and started this company. Mm. I haven't heard any attacks from him or by him. It's almost like since he's a white male, he's out of the picture. Because did you know about that? I, I, I think I've, might have seen one of the, he might be might have been one of the people that tweeted defense of sweet baby yes. and got community noted. But then whenever like the fight has been happening now, I feel like mm. I haven't seen much. I think they want the victimhood to be on a particular yes. gender of people. Yeah, yeah. So they can claim victim status. Yes. And this is the whole like I invention of nonsense like mansplaining and manspreading and bullcrap like that where they're they are, are in such a idyllic privileged society with so little discrimination that they need to make up discrimination when it doesn't even exist there. So they have something to uh, crusade against and feel virtuous and platform and, oh, look at me, uh, virtue signal, I'm so good and everything, right? Mm. That's been their playbook for ages. Yeah. So when I see something like this, which is such a parody of a uh, an email, right? And it's from an anonymous account. It's like, you know, People make up sock puppet accounts, okay? Sock puppet email accounts, and they use that. The, like, and usually they're, they're happy to... Uh, I, a lot of trolls do not care about you knowing their usernames mm. or fake sock puppet emails. They go out of their way to use a no-reply anonymous email. Sounds like someone who's really actually desperate to hide their identity. Um, not even their identity, hide 
their online persona. Most actual trolls that will do that, they happily let you see that, that thing. Yeah. I think the other thing too with this though as well, I think it's bait for people also. Yes. Because once they post this, there's going to be all the comments saying mm -hmm. kind of what you're saying, and then they're going to use those messages then as, well, if mm -hmm. this wasn't real, everything that you guys are saying is also real and an attack on me. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just snowballs into this big victimhood effect. Yeah. And so, of course, if there is anyone who is opposing this, you know, woke movement and stuff like that, watching our stuff, I do not think anyone really who watches our stuff would even think about making an email like that, mm -hmm. right? But if anyone possibly could in any feasible way do that, no, don't be so stupid. This is what they want. I actually think it's not happening, but these people are so desperate and they need stuff like this. I think, honestly, it's my opinion. It's, it's speculation, but I think their own side sent it. I wouldn't be surprised if she sent this to herself or someone in their Slack groups or anything like that. They create this narrative and they use it to be to play the victim. Well, they played they play this whole narrative to begin yeah. with. Someone just made a Steam group of games they didn't want to play, and then they got offended about it, and now we're here. <laughs> like... Exactly, exactly. And they've done things like this before. Mm. You know, the FBI has been caught out yeah. actually radicalizing people. This is the FBI radicalizing people, convincing them to then try and commit an actual hate crime, like, like a violent crime against certain groups. Mm. And then the FBI come in to stop them. Look at us, aren't we so great? causing the problem to stop themselves to justify their existence, right? Yep. They've been exposed in doing stuff like this. I'm not kidding. And there are other stuff that goes into this playbook. And so I, I you know, I X to doubt, this is the exact type of thing they want. So of course, don't do it. Call them out on it, bullcrap. Absolutely criticize where criticize, criticism is valid. But, um, cause they, they will, Take, give an itch, take a mile. They, they will play victim to the days. But the thing is, though, it's, it's not going to work this time, okay? Um, and very few people are actually doing anything like this. It, it's a legitimate pushback. And when they try and claim victimhood, oh, harassment against Sweet Baby Inc., they're getting exposed drastically for it. Even with the uh, all these articles coming out, they're getting exposed. You know what those articles are? It is content for us. <laughs> I mean, it's all just content now, isn't oh, but, it? No, 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 but <laughs> YouTubers and, and commentators, online reactors, right, are the only ones actually reading them, and we get to call them out on their bull crap, and then we get more views than that article ever could dream of, and it's like, thanks for helping us out. Yeah, they really do not see or realise how much they're shooting themselves in the foot with yes. all this. Yeah. And so, for those reasons, I'm like, bring on Gamergate 2, baby. Now, the next evolutions in this thing, and I've already mentioned, but I'm going to reiterate it, right, is... Understanding Sweet Baby Inc. is just one small part of a very large problem, mm. okay? Any diversity, equity, inclusion, work propaganda messaging, everything like that in gamings needs to be called out. That's the next phase. And uh, Cabrutus is already working on a website. He's asked for help to expand that curated list to just expose. And it's not a target harassment. It's just these are the games that have uh, either ESG, you know, um, ideals, goals, uh, they are pushing, you know, something more progressive or woke and everything, just to let us know. Because us gamers are totally fed up with it. Mm. And we will vote with our wallets here, okay? I'm at a point where it's like zero tolerance. I don't care. Even if the game ends up being somewhat good, there are other good games I can play. I do not need this propagandistic crap shoved in my face that gets me out. And this is why as is, um, uh, so as Starfield is pronoun uh, reaction, right, was uh, <laughs> so honest, truthful, and needed because it expressed what so many of us gamers are experiencing, where it's, it just takes one thing now to just mm. like get stuffed. I'm sick of this crap. Uh, like, I don't took that one line in, say, The Batman, when uh, Catwoman talks about privilege and everything, just rip me out of the film, right? That one line in Ant-Man where it's like, socialism is a charged word, but we should really, you know, listen to like that. You have to understand, even small lines like that are promoting and pushing a truly sadistic and pernicious kind of ultimate goal ideology, right? Where it's the, it, it's the whole um, uh, redistribution of wealth okay, where uh, they don't want you to own anything, you'll own nothing and be happy. This, this insane hellish communistic 
utopia mm. is ultimately what they're this is all working towards and there is collusion esg is one of the biggest kind of collusion things you know to spread this cancer throughout society by going at the platforms going at the developers going at the crucial nodes of culture that are building culture and everything because they know what's downstream of culture politics okay it, it all goes down to that and so as soon as i see a company in line with that and and it, it only takes that like these lines are so overt that is face off that that in, that company would not allow that in unless they are in lockstep to these vile goals that are ultimately the ultimate goal is to destroy western civilization western values and they and the nuclear family i'm not kidding okay because one of the reasons why this communistic intent is so against the family because the family is the crucial um uh, stabilizing unit of society when someone needs help in a rough time and everything the first unit they should look to for help is their family mm. and if they have a strong family unit people in hard times will get support from their family unit but if they can subvert that who else can they look to for support the state the state will be your family will raise your children you're old let us look after you but for us to look after you you're going to need to pay a lot more money but oh do I happen to be in a position of power and get paid a lot if you get if you pay taxes and everything like that? That's just a byproduct, comrade, right? Yeah. And so if they can try and undermine the actual wholesome social safety nets that are inbuilt, which is fundamentally a family, they give the state more power, which ultimately plays into their hand. Like this is not a conspiracy. This is overt. They've admitted stuff like this. And this whole diversity, equity, inclusion stuff is all in relation to it. It's like, you know, you can't succeed on your own. Let us help you succeed. But to succeed, we're going to need to take these resources and redistribute them again. I'll keep a huge amount of myself. It's all there, right? And it's all related. And so when I see one thing now, I know where your allegiance lies. And you are dead to me. And, and, and uh, look, I know like I've um, bought games in the past. I think Baldur's Gate 3, right, is the example here. Where, where things are at now, wouldn't buy it. Yeah, don't need it. Don't need this crap. Okay, that's the message we need to send. We are sending it. Keep at it. Expose the games, the companies, anyone that is on board with this vile, you know, ideological end that they're pushing for, that they're in lockstep and in promotion for. And don't harass them, of course, because uh, it's actually, they're the harassers, right? Vote with your wallets, call it out where it exists. And ask questions. And that's the mm. best response I've seen with Twitter, is when they try to bait you and you just say, but what about the harassment you give? Like, you know, <laughs> asking these questions and they don't respond to them. Yeah. And everyone else can see that and go, huh. Okay, so I think that's the best ammunition is just to ask simple questions. Because the other thing I've noticed reading a lot of the stuff online is that they hate simplicity. They love to complicate and confuse you and say, oh, you're confused? We'll take care of yeah. it then. Just listen to my idea and I'll think for you. Oh, yeah, that's that's been a constant tactic from the very beginning. It's, uh, you know, intersectionality mm. and internalised misogyny, internalised sexism and stuff like that to just word salad their yeah. bullcrap to confuse people enough to think, do they have a point? It's like, like no, they're... The, the, all this comes down to is that they're actually sexist and they want revenge. Yeah. It's as simple as that, okay? And they want to take away power from the institutes of power to give power to themselves. And one of the biggest ways to do that is, of course, again, get power to the state, be in lockstep, gain control over politics, all, all that stuff, all right? Their playbook is exposed. Mm -hmm. And the way to, you know, beat them is, as we've been saying, vote with the wallets and they will fail and bring back good old meritocracy, Good old free market capitalism, baby. Yeah. That's how we solve. Pro like, do you know, <laughs> poverty in the world has gone down at such a drastically, shockingly fast rate in capital countries that utilize capitalism and stuff like that. Not only has it gone down, um, like equal to our most positive projections, it's mm. gone down much faster than our most positive projections in countries that are using capitalism. Right. So combat poverty. It's not redistribution of wealth. It's enable people. Give people the tools to make as much freaking money as they can. And they will. They will. You know, I g give free-minded, hard-working individual people accessibility, open up, destroy the gatekeepers, uh, okay, and uh, make something actually a true open playing field, decentralize the development of culture and stuff like that, and people will succeed. More people will succeed 
more than we have seen in the past in amazing amounts. It's, it's simple, but it means, you know, untalented people, they, they struggle a bit. And so if they can play the victim and then get hired based on their victimhood and then, you know, create problems that don't exist and promise to fix those problems, then that's where they can get power. So, you know, they're not going to go that way. It's all related, ah, but it like the tides are turning. That's that's what we're seeing. But we will we'll keep a keen eye on what's going on because that's what we do here, baby. Stay on watch.